Monday, Thursday, 2020, the year of the virus. O Lord, open our lips. That our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O source, open our eyes. That we may behold your passion. O wisdom, disturb our consciousness. That we may live life with fullness. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. The seeds for this night were sown throughout Jesus' ministry. His parables challenged those in authority by suggesting a different way of thinking, indeed by inviting people to think for themselves. His teachings challenged the assumptions that many live by, inviting them to consider the sisterhood and brotherhood of all, the priesthood of all believers. His healing suggested that there were forces greater than those controlled by the Romans and the leaders of the synagogues. The peasant king was disturbing the social order. The oppressors of Israel were losing control. Something, Something had, had to, to be, be done. done. The carpenter's son from Galilee was becoming a little too popular, a little too powerful. The idea of a God who identified with the poor and outcast, widows and the expendables was a little too much. It was all, after all, subversive. Something had to be done. Not all the scribes and Pharisees were opposed to the teachings of Jesus, but enough were. Something had, had to be, be done. done. Following the rising of Lazarus, following the raising of Lazarus, it was clear to the council that the Jesus problem could no longer be ignored. Gospel of John. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what he had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the council and said, What are we to do? 
this man is performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and destroy both our holy place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all. You do not understand that it is better for you to have one man die for the people than to have the whole nation destroyed. He did not say this on his own, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus was about to die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but to gather into one the dispersed children of God. So from that day on, they planned to put him to death. Sadly, the chief priests didn't settle on one man. They conspired to murder Lazarus, and thus destroy the evidence of Jesus' growing power. Something was happening. Jesus and his disciples proceeded to Jerusalem. The holy city is preparing for the fast Passover. As Jesus approached Jerusalem on Sunday, the first day of the week, word of his arrival spread throughout the city. Finally, the salvation of Jerusalem has arrived. With palm branches and cloaks, the people of the great city welcome the Messiah, mounted on a donkey, clearly a different kind of king. The popularity of Jesus only cements his fate. Something, Something has, has to be done, and, and the, the news of the conspiracy, conspiracy against, against Jesus tightens. On Holy Monday, Jesus cleanses the temple, challenging people to worship God and not those with money and power. Something, Something had to be done. done. The, the news gets tighter. He continues to heal, and now children begin to follow him. Jesus praises the children for their courage. Something had to be done. Future generations might remember him. Jesus and his disciples retreat to Bethany, two miles from Jerusalem. On Holy Tuesday, Jesus and his disciples return to Jerusalem. He continues to question the leadership of his time. The Pharisees attempt to trap him in argument. They question his authority and his loyalty to the state. Jesus curses the fig tree, an analogy for the faithlessness of Jerusalem. Something, Something has to be done. done. The news tightens. tightens. On Holy Wednesday, a deal is struck between one of Jesus' strongest disciples, the zealot, Judas. He will inform the authorities where and when they can take Jesus, so as to not cause an uproar among his followers, a time when Jesus will be most vulnerable. The reason for the treachery is not completely clear. Perhaps Judas was disappointed that Jesus did not bring about a bloody revolution. After all, Judas was a zealot. Perhaps Judas was overwhelmed by Jesus' popularity. It is on Wednesday that Jesus is once again back in Bethany. It is there that a woman, having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, broke it open and anointed the head of Jesus. Many were critical of the act, nothing that the money could have been better spent the poor. Jesus rebukes them in support of the woman's kindness, and, and the, the news tightens. Enter Monday, Thursday. Jesus and his disciples leave Bethany. On this day, Jesus enters into Jerusalem for the last time. This is a day that Christ, the Lamb of God, gives himself into the hands of those who would slay him. This is the day that Christ gathered with his disciples in the upper room. This is the day when Christ took a towel and washed the disciples' feet, giving us an example that we should do to others as he has done for us. This is the day that Christ, our God, gave us this holy feast, that we who eat this bread and drink this cup may here proclaim his holy sacrifice and be partakers of his resurrection, and at the last day may reign with him in heaven. The collect for this day. O oh God, your, your Son, Son Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, has left to us this meal of bread and wine in which we share his body and his blood. 
May we who celebrate this sign of his great love show in our lives the fruits of his redemption through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. This is the day of the Passover. The Passover didn't happen once in history. It happens every year. The feast is not about remembering. It's about suspending our understanding of time by entering into the story in the present tense. The angel of death is passing over now. If we forget, if we fail to remember, if we fail to enter into the events of this night, we will die and all that went before us will vanish. Jesus enters into this deeply mystical moment in time in which the past, the present, and the future become one, undivided by time or space. Reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. On this most holy night, Jesus gives us two practices that in their simplicity and grace transcend time. Fellow servants of our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night before his death, Jesus set an example for his disciples by washing their feet, an act of humble service. He taught us its strength. He taught us the strength and growth. In, sorry. He taught us that strength and growth in life of the kingdom of God comes not with power, authority, or even miracles, but with lowly service. From the Gospel of John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. 
And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share in me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. And for this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and returned to the table. He said to them, Do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one's other feet, one another's feet. For I have set for you an example, that you also do as I have done. On this night, during the year of the virus, take time to wash your feet, and if it's safe, the feet of others. In so doing, you share in the royal priesthood of Christ, recalling whose servant you are by following the Master. But come, remembering his admonition, that what he has done for you is also what you should do for one another. For the servant is not greater than his master, nor is the one who sent him greater than the one who sent him, nor is the one who sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Shortly after the foot washing, and just prior to the Last Supper, Jesus confronted his betrayer. From the, Math from the Gospel of Matthew. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. And he answered, One who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes, as it is written of him, by woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that one to not have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, You have said so. As the meal continued, it changed in character and focus. It is at this event with his disciples that the Last Supper is instituted. This is the first Eucharistic feast. In the spirit of the Passover, it does not happen once, but on each occasion of its celebration, we find ourselves in the presence of Jesus and his disciples in the upper room, sheltered from the conspirators, the last moments of peace in the life of the Son of God. In the Gospel of Matthew. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, 
I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This night, this holy night, contains a final teaching. The title for this day is Monday. It comes from an old Anglo-French word that was borrowed from the Latin mandatum, which means commandment. From the Gospel of John. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Sister, let me be your servant, let me be a spice to you. May the time they have more grace to learn to be my servant. We are pilgrims on a journey, fellow travelers on the road. We are here to help each other walk a mile and bear the I will hold the Christ tight for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you, seek the peace and the Lord. I will weep when you are weeping, when you laugh, I'll laugh with you. I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through. When we sing to God in heaven, we shall find such harmony. For the whole need more together of Christ's love and agony. Brother, let me be your servant, let me be our Christ to you. May the time we have your grace to let you be my servant. For peace from on high and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops, for all clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for the leaders of the nations, for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this community of Dartmouth and for every city and community throughout the world at this time of global crisis, for all who risk their lives and security for the health and well-being of others. Lord, have mercy. For the time of ahead marked by patience and kindness, for the abundant harvest for all to share, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. To those who travel by land, water, and air, for the sick and the suffering, particularly those whose lives have been touched by COVID-19 virus, for prisoners and captives, for their safety, health, and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for our deliverance from all affliction and strife and need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the absolution and remission of our offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have died, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. A prayer for aid against perils. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A prayer for peace. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on doing your will, and that freed from fear of our enemies, we may pass our time in rest and quietness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In a prayer for protection and rest. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this life may rest in your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. It's now uh, early in the evening and Thursday evening. Jesus is going to retreat from here into a quiet place. He will note the mounting tension that's existing in and around his company throughout the city of Jerusalem. He'll acknowledge that even one of his earliest disciples, Peter, will deny him before the morning arrives. His disciples, fatigued by the events of the day and the entire week, will fall asleep. Jesus will ask them and invite them to stay awake, but they won't stay awake. Shortly after, the authorities will come and take Jesus some of the disciples will try to push back, but there are only a few of those compared to the troops that surround um, Jesus. In the company of the soldiers and the authorities is Judas. Judas will arrive, kiss Jesus, and then retreat into the darkness of the night. Jesus goes from there into trial. He meets with Caiaphas, with Pilate and Caiaphas. The courts of uh, Israel are open. Courts of the Romans are open. They remain open all through that night, by the morning, in a few short hours. The verdict will be in. We enter into good time.